Okay, so we also discussed the fixed point iteration and fixed point iteration is essentially, you have x equal f of x and you just compute the sequence xn to be f of x n minus one and so on, okay? So now we, we discuss about the conversion of uh, fixed point iteration, yeah? So we say that, okay, so if you try to use fixed point iteration, then when does it converge and when it doesn't? And the idea is you use Taylor expansion to compute what is the errors, yeah? And the errors uh, define to be the difference between the approximation and the solution, okay? And then we, we use the Taylor expansion to derive EN plus one roughly is G prime uh, at the solution of EN. So if you want the errors going down every iteration, then the absolute value of G prime X star have, uh, has to be less than one, okay? So we stop, we stop right here, okay? So now you remember now, you remember two, three, or one, so after a long break. So now, you know, usually uh, if G prime is very close to one, then the conversion is very slow. So you have to use another method, okay? So that is the topic for today's lectures. So we will study the faster method. And so this is a numerical method for fixed point iteration. So suppose you have GX is one over co co hyperbolic cosine X, then, you know, you, you can start from 0 0.75 and then you apply the method and and then you get you get out of this table. Okay, so now we we will study a, a faster conversion, a, a fast a faster method. So proposed by Newton. So we saw Newton before. He came up with the divided difference table. So Newton, the same Newton that discover you know like the gra gravity uh, law, the gravity um, or the the Newton law. I mean in physics. So so the same Newton he worked on many things. So now what is the Newton method for finding the equation? Oh, sorry, for finding the zero of the equation fx equals zero. So maybe before we discuss the formula, you know, let, let me ask you a very simple question, okay? So now, uh, yeah, Newton dis discovered gravity law, right? So, well, gravity is there, but he discovered the, the, the law of gravity, yeah? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, but anyway, so, so now uh, let, 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 let me ask you a very simple question, yeah? So now suppose you draw, uh, maybe the question is available in the Moodle. So we, we discussed, a very simple question to motivate the, the method. So if you go to the interactive documents, so let me share you the Moodle page. Uh, no, not the correct one. So. So I can share you this Moodle page. So you go to, you go to the interactive documents, yeah? And then there is a, a question about Newton method, okay? So suppose you have a curve, yeah? X squared minus two, okay? So, so can you write on the piece of paper? So I write now, then I will show you later, yeah? So, so, so the curve, uh, 
is x square minus two. Okay, so so then you draw a tangent line x equal to two. Yeah, so you, you you see it, and now where does the tangent line cut the x axis? So now I show you the the pictures. So okay, so suppose you have the curve x square minus two, right? So I, I I'm not a I'm not drawing a very good figures now, but essentially x squared minus two is this parabola, right? And now the point x equal two right here, yeah. Then you draw a tangent line. So maybe the red one is the tangent line, yeah, and exactly at x equal two. And it go down and cut the all x axis. Okay, so now the question is, what is the intersection? So suppose I call it x one. So the question is, what is x one? So can you can you answer that question? So I'm going to my Google Drive and see how many people. Uh, computed the intersection correctly. So we have three three responses or four responses, but we have two answers. So so I can share you the answer. Yeah. So right now we see that. You know, I mean, like the majority said it's 1.5, okay? And some people say that it's square root two, okay? And some say that it's 1.6, okay? So we don't have a majority. <laughs> okay, so so let, let, let's see. Okay, so now, well, oh, no, sorry, we have a majority, yeah? So majority is 1.5, yeah? Okay, so let, let's see how, how do I compute it. So, so suppose I have uh, the this point x equal to, right? So what is the equation of the tangent line? So remember the equation of the tangent line is, is uh, y minus y zero equal f prime, at x0, x minus x0, right? So this is a question of tangent line. Yeah. And, and you see, I mean, so suppose this one is x0 is, is 2, right? Question, what is question? Okay, so somebody uh, said already, yeah. So yeah, equation is just y equal four, e, sorry, y minus two equal four x minus two. So y equal four x minus six. So set y equal zero, then x equal one, one, five. So it's correct, yeah. So, but now, now I, I want to follow you, but I want to leave it at x zero and y zero, yeah. So now I just set, y equals zero yeah so if i set y equals zero then i have uh x equal x1 right so this is x1 minus x0 yeah then then what do i have so then i have uh y uh, sorry I, I just have minus y0 divided by f prime x0 equal x1 minus x0, right? It's a bit crowded, but anyway, so you see it. So then, 
then what is the formula for x1? So x1 is just x0 minus so y0 is just f of x0 over f prime x0. Okay. And now we have we have uh, we have x0 equal to 2. So you have x1 is just equal to 2 minus f of 2. So remember f is, is this one, yeah. So f of 2 is just 4 minus 2, it's just 2, right? And f prime, so f prime is just equal to x, right? So you have 2 over 2 is, sorry, 2 times 2, it's just 4. So you got 2 minus 1 half is 1.5, yeah? So the, the correct answer is 1.5. So now look at this, look at this. Formula. Okay. So what happened? Yeah. So if I start the process again from x1, yeah, then I have y1 here. Then I draw a tangent line that going that going to touch uh, the curve at x1. Okay. So so maybe the second figure is, is here. So the, the second figure is, so you see X1 already, right? So now the second figure is you have the same curve, yeah? So this one is X squared minus two. And now instead of starting at X equal two, now you start at X equal 1.5. So, so now X zero is, sorry, X1 is 1.5. Remember? And then you draw the tangent line again. Okay. And this one gives you X2. Yeah. yeah. Then I, I can repeat the same calculation and I can say that my X2 is just equal X1 minus F x1 divided by f prime x0 and so on so you just repeat the process okay and that essentially the newton method so so newton uh, discovered that you know like 300 years ago or maybe probably the about time so so you see, you repeat the process. So in the end, so what does the sequence go to? Square root two, yeah? So you, you can see that, I mean, the sequence will, will go to the zero of, of the function, yeah? So now that is essentially the, the Newton method. So now we go back to the slide and we make it a bit more formal. So now remember, you know, you can use Taylor expansion to derive the same thing, right? So, so now f of x, when you expand around xn, then this is the formula for Taylor expansion, yeah? And if you ignore the higher order terms, remember x minus xn is something less than one, right? So when you raise to the higher power, it just becomes smaller and smaller, yeah? So when you drop the higher order terms, then you get exactly this equation of the tangent line and you set it equal zero. And then you got this formula, okay? So remember we got X1 equal X0 minus F, X0 over F prime, X0 and so on. So in general, xn plus one is xn minus fxn over f prime xn. Yeah, so you don't have to remember this formula, but at least you should remember the pictures, how the method was derived, yeah? 
and this is the pictures. So you have x n right here. Then you draw a tangent line. Okay, so we draw a tangent line already, and then you set y equals zero. Then you got x n plus one. Okay, so this is exactly Newton method. So now, okay, so now how do I write out Newton method in MATLAB? <clears throat> so now I can give you exactly this table, yeah? So now suppose we have, um, okay, so, so this is the equation we have, f of x equal x hyperbolic cosine x minus one, yeah? And then you take some iteration and then you should get this table. So how do we implement this in MATLAB? Okay, so, so let me share the MATLAB with you. So, so this one, uh, so may, maybe edit Newton. Yes, yeah. Okay, so what is our function? Remember our function is, so you can de divide, sorry, you can define the f as anonymous function, yeah? So x, uh, x co have a quality cosine x minus one, yeah? And is it minus one or yeah? And now, what is the derivative? <clears throat> so, what is the derivative of this function? <clears throat> so, if you remember your derivative, then um, you know take the derivative of this one by product rules. So hyperbolic cosine <clears throat> x minus, oh, sorry, plus, yeah. So if you take <clears throat> the derivative, you apply product rules, then the x derivative is just one. So you have cosine, hyperbolic cosine x. And the second terms will be hyperbolic sine. Yeah, so this is your derivative. And then what is the initial point? So initial point is just x0 equal one, yeah? So x equal one. So remember we reuse the variable so we don't have to, to, to label x1, x2, x3, right? So now maybe we, we say that, okay, so the iteration is from one to maybe max iteration, so max max iteration say say 10 yeah and then remember the formula so the, the formula is just x n plus one yeah so the formula is like this so so x n plus one equal x n minus f of x n over f of x n prime Okay, but because we reuse the variable x again and again, so we just write x equal x minus f of x over derivative df of x. Okay, and we print out the value of x. Yeah, so you can print out so n f. Yeah, so now what are what do I want to print out? So I, what is xn and what is f of xn? So print out xn. So what is x? Yeah.
sorry i just lost the internet connection okay so no problem so now <clears throat> i remember i was working on the so maybe the internet doesn't lie newton method so anyway so we we get back to newton method okay so so that is the the one i have right so i have exactly the formula here and uh, i have to give what is the value here so the n equal a decimal number so i have in here then i have x here then i have f of x okay so now if i run it <clears throat> so now you see it if i run it then i have yeah so initially you got x equal one and then so sorry this one x zero yeah so this one is x zero equal one and you see x one is 0 0.8 and then it's going to uh, 0 0.76 sorry 0 0.76 5 0 10 and f of x is very close to zero so you, you i mean essentially just zero after a few iteration yeah so so that is the newton method and now if you go back to the slide So, so essentially I just print out this table and you, you see that if you print out the, the, the f of x in, in, the, in the scientific notation, then you will see that it's gone down to machine epsilon after five iteration, yeah? And you can see that if you use fixed point iteration, okay, for the same function, we we use the same function here, yeah, and it's 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 going down very slowly, right? After seven iteration, you know the errors is still, you know, like ten to the minus four or something, right? So, so Newton method definitely faster, yeah. So that's why nobody claimed the name for fixed point iteration, but you know, Newton has a name for Newton method. Oh, so this one is the script I, I just wrote. Yeah, so I put in the slide. Yeah. So, so this one is the function f, and this one is a derivative. Yeah, so you can compute it by hand. And you print out the table. So this is a formula for Newton method. So x n plus one equal x n minus f f x n over f prime x n. Okay. And now <clears throat> we can see that Newton method can be viewed at a fixed point iteration. So why is that? So remember, if you define uh, x minus f of x over f prime x is a function g, yeah. Then essentially you have a fixed point iteration because you remember you have x n plus one equal g of x n. Okay, so that is the the the, the relation. And if you take the derivative of G, okay, so by using the Gaussian rules, you can get out the derivative of G look like this, yeah? And if you want the Newton method to converge, then you want G prime less than one, right? And G prime less than one just means that this ratio just less than one, yeah? But I mean, you have to assume that f prime uh, at the zero is non, non, non-zero. Otherwise, this one blows up. Yeah. So this term 
blows up if f prime x uh, equals zero. So now we we discuss about the uh, the method already, but now how good how good it is. Okay, so now before we discuss how good it is compared with the uh, uh, fixed point iteration, now we have to define the errors. Yeah, so what is the errors? So the errors is the difference between the solution, the approximate solution minus the exact solution. Yeah. And you see now the theorem is just say that the errors are step n plus one over uh, en square, we go to a fixed constant. So before we prove this theorem, okay, let's look at this one. So en plus one over en square is a constant. Yeah. So what is the results for fixed point iteration. So for fixed point iteration, you have EN plus one over EN go to a constant. Okay, so okay, so this one is the results for fixed point iteration. So let me let me write down before we try to compare. It, yeah. So so this is the fixed point iteration. So so maybe let me write down a piece of paper. So for fixed point iteration, then you have En plus one, okay? Over En, it's just approximately G prime and X star, right? So some constant because G is a constant X star is a constant, yeah? And for Newton method, you have En plus one over En square, roughly is a constant. So one half uh, F double prime X star over F prime X star, right? Okay, so that is the, the theorem. So before we try to show the theorem is correct, I mean, let's see whether we can discuss what is the, the implication of the theorem, yeah? So now the question is, which method is faster? So Newton of fixed point iteration, which method is faster? So faster in the sense that it takes fewer iteration. Okay, so faster means that fewer iteration to get to the solution. So which one is faster? Fixed point or Newton method? So which which one is faster? So anyone put in the chat box? Uh, Yeah, Newton is faster, right? So because, because you see, I mean, you see Newton is faster because suppose you, yeah, fewer iteration, yeah, then, then it's better, yeah? So because if you, if you look at the relation, this relation, yeah? So suppose I have say E0 is, is, is one, yeah? Okay, then for fixed point iteration, yeah, for fixed point, yeah, then I have this one is E1 is just G prime X star, right? And E2 is just G prime, sorry. X star square, right? Okay. So, so, but for Newton method, for Newton, yeah. 
then suppose I have E0 is one. Yeah. Well, this one should be E0, but E0 equal one. So I, I, I just have this, yeah. So it's for Newton method, then E1 will be, you know, this En, this one half, F double prime over F, okay, sorry. And then E2 will be E1 square, right? So because because remember we have a we have this relation, so it will be E1 square. Yeah. So so E1 square will be you now one half of F double prime over F prime of X star here square, right? So so this one is Oh, sorry, E2, we, we have E2 is G prime of E1. Well, maybe at the, the, the second step, they're still the same, yeah? But now what about E3? So E3, E3 in the fixed point, then you have this one, G prime, uh, right? Because you just multiply by by another terms of G prime X star, right? But for Newton method, for, for E3, you have it equal E2 square, right? And then E2 square is this one half F double prime, F prime to the fourth. You see, so eventually, you know, I mean, suppose this ratio is less than, than one, then, when you double the power, it goes down faster, and you just increase the power by one at every every iteration. Yeah, so this one you you double the power at every step. Yeah, so that is why Newton is faster. So so now we go back to prove the theorem. So how do we prove the theorem? So the theorem say that, okay, now I want to show that, yeah. So now let me show the theorem again, yeah. Or maybe, maybe let me write down yeah, the theorem. So the theorem, so the theorem is En plus one. So for Newton method, yeah. So for Newton method, E n plus one over E n square is equal one half F um, double prime X star over F prime X star. Okay. So remember the Taylor formula. So so this one we can prove it by Taylor formula. So Taylor expansion around uh, so what is a Taylor expansion formula? So around Xn, yeah. So I have I have I have the formula for the expansion. So if you remember f of x, okay, equal f of x in, yeah, plus f prime of x in divided by one x minus x in, yeah, plus uh, f double prime x in divided by two x minus x in square. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the square should be uh, sorry. Yeah. And and then so now what happened if I put well said there's a higher order terms. So I just put x minus x and cube. Okay, so for the higher order terms. 
So we, we ignore that for the moment, right? So now, what happened if I put x equal x star? So remember, x star is the solution of f of x, yeah? So, so f of x star just equals zero, okay? So x star is the solution of f of x, yeah? And now, what is what is this formula become? So it will become f of x in, okay, plus f prime x in, x star minus x in, right? Plus f double prime x in over two, x star minus x in square. Okay, so this one just we apply the the Taylor expansion at, at xn and we evaluate at x star. Okay, so that's why we got this zero because zero is a solution of f of x. But remember, remember we define the errors. So if you remember, we define the errors to be uh, xn minus x star, right? Okay, so this is how we define the errors. And, and if we put it in, we put it in here, then, then the, the first term will become minus en, right? Uh, zero, this zero, I said zero, it's not, oh. Uh, in front of uh, this one, a big O, sorry, this is a big O notation. Big O just mean an umbrella, you know, like of order x minus xn cube, yeah? So this one is a zero, but this one is a big O, yeah? So this means that you ignore higher order terms, yeah? So higher order terms is of order, uh, order three. Okay, so now, now I, I put in my definition for the errors. So it will become f of x in minus f prime x in e in. Right? And now this one becomes e n square. Yeah? So this one becomes f double prime x in e n square. And the last term is just a big O. Yeah, maybe I should have a big O like this. Very big, yeah. So definitely not zero. So big O of E N quip. Okay. But then okay, so now what is the consequence? Remember we still have it equal zero, right? So we still have it equal zero. So what is the consequence? So the consequence is now I can move f of x n set to the left. Okay. So I move f of x n to the left, then, well, this one is a minus. Then I flip the sign, so it becomes f prime x n e n minus f double prime x n e n square, right? Uh, you, you can say that we move these two terms to the right, yeah? The same thing, yeah? So plus capital big O, E, N, whip. So I just leave it here. So this one is my, my consequence of the Taylor expansion. So I call this one is equation number one, yeah? So we leave, leave it here. And now remember what is the, the formula for What is the formula for the Newton method? So if you remember the formula for Newton method, then it will be xn plus one equal xn minus f prime xn over f of xn, right? Yeah. And now if I take off x star on the left, I take off x star on the right, okay? It's still the same, right? But this one become my en plus one. 
So remember the errors, the errors was defined like this, yeah? So Xn minus X star is the errors. So now Xn plus one minus X star just En plus one. And this one is my En, yeah? This one En minus F prime Xn. Uh, sorry, I can, I, I, I got it mixed up. This one should be F over F prime, yeah? Should be F. Over F prime, so, so there, there should be there should be no ten here, yeah. We got the formula in bracket. It should be F over F prime, okay. And now I cross multiply that I got F prime X n E n F prime. Xn minus f of Xn. Okay. Yeah, so far so good, right? So I just cross multiply En with f prime. So and then divided by f prime. Yeah, the common terms. Yeah. And now I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace this Fn by the right hand side in the box, the right hand side in the box, yeah. So now if I replace by, by what is on the right hand side of the box, then what I have will be uh, En plus one will equal, so F prime Xn, and here I have E N F prime X N minus. Okay, so now I put in the the the, the left hand side of the box of the red box. So it will be, become F prime X N E N plus F double prime X N E N square plus O E N. So big O, right? So big O E and quip, right? Yeah. And now you see this term cancel with this one. Okay. And so what do I have? So I have E N plus one. Right. I have E n plus one just equal F double prime X n E n square plus O E n fifth over F prime X n. Yeah. And now if I divide it by E n square, yeah, divide it the left and the right. So divide E n plus one over E n square. Then on the right, I have F double prime X N. No more E N square, right? And this one O E N over F prime X N. And you see when, when N go to infinity, okay? Then E N go to zero. Remember we, we have a conversion, right? So E N just mean the errors between the exact solution and, and the iteration, yeah? So this one go to zero. So then X n go to X star, the solution, right? And so in the limit, in the limit, this guy goes to zero. This guy go to F double prime. Uh, I think I missed one half somewhere. Okay, so I missed one half when we, when we copy down the, without the Taylor formula. So we, we have one half here, but we missed the one half here, yeah? so, okay. So in the box, then this one should be one half, okay. And then, and then this one should be one half. 
to be one half here, right? Or one half at the top right. Okay. So then, okay, so now EN go to zero, F prime XN go to F prime X star, and F double prime XN go to F double prime X star, right? So then the EN plus one over EN square, yeah? Go to one half F double prime X star, of uh, f prime x star so that is the conclusion of the theorem so you see the theorem it just you apply the Taylor expansion and and then you you get out you get out the um, You, you get out the expression of f x f x n in terms of the first and the second derivative and then you plug it in the formula for the newton method and then you cancel out yeah cancel out like this and then you take the limit and that it give you the the formula so that is exactly what we have here in the in the theorem. Okay. So it will go to um, f prime over to sorry f double prime over to f prime. Yeah. I, I think maybe this one is the proof right here. Yeah. So the proof here the short version is here so if you use the expansion around xn and then you evaluate the x star so we do two steps at the same time here okay and then you block it in so so this one a bit fast yeah because f from en here minus fxn essentially you have to take this uh, this term here, yeah, you plug it in and then it will give you one half f of prime en square plus en fifth and then you know divided by en square you get the same same results okay so any any question about this one so this is the theorem yeah and here this is an example so so you can use the previous uh, MATLAB <coughs> strip and you can compute the ratio of EN plus one over EN square. And you see that, I mean, uh, the errors EN plus one over EN square, the ratio is around minus 1.24, right? But suddenly it jump up to a very high value. So why is that? So you got the errors, yeah, going down, yeah. So errors going down one, two, three. So three, you jump to six, yeah, six to twelve, right? And why stop right here? So it's supposed to go to. 10 to the minus 24, right? Because you double the rate, you, you, you double the, the errors every, you square the errors every step. And why suddenly stop here? So why, why stop at, you, you see the, the, the power, right? So the power is 10 to the minus one. And you double the rates, you got 10 to the minus two. So, so this one is not 10 to the minus four, but from three to six, you double the power, right? And here from six minus six to minus 12, you double the power. But here stop at minus 17. So why it doesn't go down to 10 to the minus 24? Anyone?
So if you look at this table, right, according to the according to the theory, right? So you you expect that the, this the last term will be ten to the minus twenty four, right? But here is only ten to the minus seventeen. So why is that? Anyone? Yes, exactly. Machine errors. Yes, machine errors. Remember, machine errors is only about 2.2, .2, 10 to the minus 16, right? So it cannot go further down. Yeah. So stop, stop around, you know, this order. It cannot go down to 10 to the minus 24. So that's why suddenly you got a big number here. Okay, but explain this that big number. So you cannot go down, you know, like 10 to the minus 24 for this double uh, precision. Yeah, so this is a machine close to machine errors. Okay. So that is that is the, the, the reason. So we take a break and we start again at one o'clock is it okay yeah so we we start again at one o'clock okay so we start again yeah so now uh so this one is about newton method but you know newton method uh, there is some uh issue about the initial guess I mean, if the initial guess is not very close to the uh, solution, exact solution, then you might not have a, a good conversion. Yeah. So, so choosing the initial guess is very important. And then, uh, you know, like in many cases, you have f of x, but not the derivative. Of, of f yeah suppose you measure the the data at uh, some points then you got the value of the function only not the derivatives so then how do we fix the um, the problem that we don't have a derivative so people fix that by the second method so remember you can approximate the derivative by the finite difference by the divided difference coefficient, remember? So this one gives you the second, the slope of the second line, yeah? So the slope of the second line is, is a very good approximation of the derivative if the two points are close to, to each other, yeah? So then, so the second method will be given by, by this formula, so, the next iteration is just the own iteration minus f of xn over. So instead of a derivative, now you have a divided difference. Yeah. And divided difference over xn minus one and xn. So you see, you see the problem when you put n equals zero. So when you put n equals zero, you got uh, x1 here x1 here, x1 here, but then you got x minus one here, yeah? So n cannot be from zero, right? So n has to be at least from one, yeah? So you have x2 equal x1, then f of x1, and this one is x0, and then this x1, you see? So, so, so you need at least, you know, two initial guesses, x0 and x1, not, not one, yeah? Two initial guesses. You start with x0 and x1, then you use this formula for x2, x3, and so on. And yeah, so when, when xn close to xn minus one, the divided difference give you an approximation of f prime xn. So then, you know, this one is like approximate Newton method. But you you don't have to compute the derivative, okay? 
So, so this is the slope of the line that go through uh, xn minus one xn and the value fxn and fxn minus one. So now you can write a script, okay, to implement second method. So suppose you have uh, x0 equals 0 0.5, x1 equals 0 0.6, then we can compute the script. Okay, so now how do we implement the second method? So now, well, so this is the theorem, yeah? So how do we implement the second method? So we go to MATLAB, yeah? So, so suppose I want the second method. So second method. Okay, so I make a second method, right? So, so what is the function? So the function is e x plus logarithm x. So e x. Plus logarithm x. So this one is the function f. Okay. And now you know you you do the same as before. So maybe for n is one to max iteration. Yeah. So so this one you have to give two initial uh, point. Right. So x zero is so what is x0? So your x0 is um, 0 0.5 and, and x1 is 0 0.6, yeah? Okay, so now remember first you have to compute the divided difference. Okay, so first you divide the maybe the f, yeah? So df, because now you don't have a derivative anymore, right? So you have to take f of x1 minus f of x0 and then divide it by x1 minus x0, right? And so now your x2, your x2, remember your x2 will be x1 minus uh, f of x1 over divided difference, yeah, over uh, divided difference over x0 and x1, yeah. And now we move on, so we move on. So, so you print out x2, so like before, you f print f, so d is this and x. Um, is this and f of x is this. So we put in the value, sorry, not d, but um, n equal a decimal number, right? And so you put in n is, um, is the value the iteration n and then you put in x is x2 and you put in f of x2 right and now we have to be a bit careful how do we move on so we move on by okay now my x0 will be or maybe my so remember now you got you have x0, x1, and x2, right? And now you need to move it to, you know, like, <clears throat> you, you have to move it to, to the new variable. So, so then my new, my new x1, yeah, will be x2, yeah? And then my new x0, will be my x1, 
okay and then we repeat we repeat this uh, so if, if you go back up here yeah then you got x1 and x0 then you put x2 again and then so on so now we run it uh, we have a defined max iteration so max iteration say 20 yeah so we run it oh we got something so what is the problem here so x is okay so now the the problem is we didn't move it correctly so x1 equal x2 yeah and then x0 equal x1 now maybe we have to do x0 equal x1 first yeah so x0 equal x1 and x1 equal x2 okay so you see that <clears throat> just just forget about the 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 iteration after nine yeah just look at the first eight iteration so you got the 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 value x is converted to something right zero point twenty six ninety eight something and f of x is close to zero yeah so when f of x is close to zero then you know then then df becomes zero so you cannot you cannot compute df anymore because when this one is cl close to zero then df equals zero and you divide it by zero then then it, it doesn't work right so maybe we have to say that if df equals zero uh, maybe absolute df less than epsilon yeah and we break we we don't want to do the calculation anymore okay, okay. otherwise so the f is We asked for a break already, but um, maybe X is there. No, I think break, break is okay. Yeah. Um, so So why it doesn't break? So what is the value of df here? So df, df start a number. Ah, okay. So because we got zero over zero, actually. So we got zero over zero because, you know, the two point x one and x zero could be close to zero as well. So maybe the condition is maybe when, when, uh the f is not a number yeah so if if the f is not a number then we just break because it doesn't make sense for zero divided by zero okay so you then you have something like this so you see f f of x become very close to zero after eight iteration and you don't have to compute the derivatives yeah so we we don't need to compute the derivative of this this uh this function so now go back to the slide yeah so so essentially i just implement this uh, table and and you see that after eight iteration 
Okay, we hit the 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 the, the errors. We we, we hit the machine errors, so we we don't we cannot carry out the calculation anymore, right? So remember, with Newton method, you stop at about um, the same for the same function. You stop about five iteration. Yeah, after five iteration, the errors is you know less than machine errors already. But for second method, you need a bit more, right? So you need three more iteration to get down to this. Yeah. So we got the same answer at xn. Yeah. So zero point two six nine eight something. Okay. So now. How do we prove? How do we prove the the errors? Um, how, how do we prove that the, the, the errors uh, for this second method? Well, so remember now, because we do not have the Newton method, we don't have a derivative, so there's no e n square here. But now it's a product of e n times e n minus one. Okay, so it's not exactly like en plus one over en square, but it's close. And this ratio can be proved that it's going to f prime over two f double, sorry, f double prime over two f prime, the solution. And how do we prove it? Well, so this one is a bit technical, but at least I can show you step by step. Yeah. So first, we divide we, we de define the errors as before. So this one is xn plus one minus the exact solution. Yeah. And then you use the definition of xn xn plus one. So this one is just the definition of xn plus one. Okay. You replace into this xn plus one minus x star. Yeah. Then you move x star to close to xn. So then you got this, you got this uh, equation, yeah. So there is nothing here. You just move x star close to xn, yeah. And then for the second term, okay. So look at the second term. So for the second terms, you divide it and you multiply it by the same terms yeah we're just x n minus x star so you multiply and you divide it by the same terms yeah and then after that okay so this one will be the common terms remember so this one is x n minus x star so x n minus x star so you take it out yeah then the factor one come from this term okay and then this second factor just come from you know i mean this one will become the divided difference over x n and x star right so it will become this this term yeah and you divide it by divided difference over so 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 these terms come from from here yeah and then okay so remember xn minus x star is nothing but an e n yeah and now if you expand this one out okay you expand this one out yeah you multiply cross multiply one by f then you got you got this term yeah okay and then we use the same trick. So we multiply and divide it by, you know, xn minus one minus x star. So what is just en minus one? Yeah, just, just en minus one. Yeah. And then if you remember the formula for divided difference, the last quotient is the divided difference over three points. Okay. So it's a divided difference over three points. Okay, so now 
if you divide en plus one by en and en minus one, then you got this ratio, this ratio of divided difference over three points over divided difference over two points. Yeah. And you take the limit and then the limit just give you one half f of prime x star when n go to infinity. So remember, where do we get this formula? So where do we where do we get this formula? So the last one is okay, right? I mean, the bottom one is okay, right? Because the divided difference, when you take the limit, when xn go to x star, then it's just the derivative f prime and x star, right? And how about the top one? The top one, why we got the divided difference over three points, we go to one half f double, f double prime. Anyone? So where do we see this? Where do we see this? Um, where do we see this divided difference uh, over three points? Remember in the interpolation stuff, yeah? So if you go back to interpolation, okay, then uh, there is the divided difference formula. I mean, there's a mean value for divided, mean value theorems for divided difference, yeah? So if you go back to the lectures on, maybe I'll show you the lectures so we'll go back to the so if I go back to interpolation, yeah. And if you remember the very end when we talk about errors. Then there is the the theorem for the, the mean value theorem for the body difference. So, okay, so this is a mean value theorem for the body difference. Yeah. Okay, so, so now, so what happened is if I use this theorem, not only for three points, then what do I have? So I have. So you remember this theorem, right? So now I just apply this theorem for, for three points. And then what do I have? So if I apply this divided difference, mean value theorem for divided difference for three points, yeah? X1, X2, X3, yeah? Then I got the second derivative at some point xi over two factorial. Okay, so this is the the divided difference mean value theorem. So mean value theorem, mean value theorem for divided difference, right? You see x1, x2, x3 is here, yeah? And the point side is somewhere in between, okay? So now when we collapse, when we collapse three points to each other, so you see when, when this x1 is moving, you know, to some x star, right? So x star may be the, the one, right here yeah so when when those three points are moving to x star again okay, and the formula just collapse into you know x star x star x star equal f 
double prime x star over two, right? Because you know there's no other ways, there's no other, there's no other limit, right? I mean, because in this formula, x1, x2, x3 are separate. Yeah. So x1 is here, x2, x3 is here. But then but then when it collapses to one point, okay, then it just collapses to the second derivative at that point. Yeah. So now we go back to the, the slide, yeah. You see, so this one is xn go to x star, xn minus one go to x star. So the mean value theorem just give you this one half f double prime x star, okay? So the whole process, it's just trying to get into this expression. Okay, so so that that is the the, the, the theorem. And in MATLAB, okay, we we can solve for the for the zero of the function by by the f zero, yeah. So f zero, you know, I mean, first you have to define what is the uh, function as an anonymous function, and then you call f zero uh, f, and then the initial guess, yeah. And then you can give uh, the interval, you know, like uh, in, in, in initial intervals, and then it will try to find the zero for you. Yeah. Okay. So any any question so far? So so F zero is a command that use a combination of bisection and sequence method, okay? And inverse quadratic interpolation. So we discussed about this inverse interpolation in the tutorial last time, but I mean, it's not very, very, um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not very hard, but we, we don't go into detail here, yeah? So, so, F zero will use a combination of three methods and it fires zero for you, yeah? So now what we have so far is four methods, bisection methods, yeah? Um, fixed point iteration, Newton method, and sequence method. Okay, so Newton methods and sequence method are faster, but you you need to have a good initial guess. Okay, so so maybe that's why they combine, you know, like bisection method and then um, fixed point iteration, and then after that they use Newton method. Yeah. So Newton method require derivative. So if you don't have the derivative, then you just use second method. So how do you stop? Okay, like in my example, I just use a max iteration, but you can use other thing. You know, you can say that if your value is less than some tolerance, okay, or if the iteration are too close to each other, yeah, or the relative, uh, distant uh, close to each other, then you stop. Yeah. Otherwise, just use a maximum number of iteration. Okay. So now, so remember, we saw four methods. Okay. And we saw the theorems that related the errors. So now, so look at this definition. Yeah. This definition say that if you have a number new, Okay, the largest number new. So that when you take the limit of this ratio, so this is the errors at step n plus one divided by the errors at step n raised to that power new. And if it, the limit goes to a fixed constant, yeah, 
then we call new is the order of conversion. Yeah. So now what is the order of conversion for fixed point iteration? And what is the order of conversion for Newton method? Anyone? So what is the order of conversion for fixed point iteration? So for fixed point iteration, remember we have EN plus one over EN equal G prime at X star, remember? Yeah. Then what is the order of conversion for fixed point iteration? One, yeah, linear, yeah, what is one, yeah? And then what is the order of conversion for Newton method? Two, right? Because you have En plus one over En square, right? So that exactly, you know, we say here, so when new equal one, then we said linear or first order of conversion. And this beta, when it, you know, close to one, Conversion is slow, yeah? So fixed point iteration has linear, con linear order conversion. And when new is bigger than one, then we call it super linear conversion. And when new equal two, quadratic conversion or order two, yeah? And now the interesting thing about secant method is people can prove that the order conversion of second method is new equal one point square root five over two. Okay, so this is a one dot ratio. So I say it bigger than one, but less than two. So second method, you know, said, yeah, so odd place, yes, I agree, but you know, I mean, it's exactly the one dot ratio. Yeah. So, so people can prove that the order of conversion of second method is exactly the golden ratio. Okay, so now remember so far, we've done only, you know, like single variable function. So, you know, like univariate uh, function, yeah. So now what happens if you have a system of nonlinear equations? Remember in the very first, uh, slide when we say about the motivation, you know, like you can have a navigation equation, you know, suppose you want to identify your location using GPS. Yeah, so you need the signals from the satellites from at least four satellites. Yeah. Then you have to solve, you have to solve a system of, of, um, yeah, so this one, the system of four nonlinear equations, okay? So this is the X, Y, and Z is your position, and B is the bias of your device, and X, I, Y, I, Z, I is the, um, so, uh, I mean the position of the satellite, and T, I is the time that send you the signals, yeah? So you have to solve, I mean, you don't have to solve it, but your mobile phone have to, so it has to solve it in order to, to give you the location in the map, yeah. Then how do we how do we solve it, right? So we discuss only about a single variables, univariate case, yeah. But now we need to move into two variables or three variables or more, right? So now before we can do that, we have to talk about Taylor expansion for several variables. Yeah, okay. So, so that is the next topic I want to say. So this one is the Taylor expansion for function of n variables, right? So we ignore the higher order terms. We ignore the second orders and above, right? Then you just have uh, this formula. So f of x1 plus h1, so h is very tiny, yeah, h1 is tiny, up to xn very tiny, can be expanded by the value 
fxn x1 up to xn yeah and h1 is the difference the partial derivative of x1 at that point in, in in x1 up to xn and plus up to partial uh up to xn okay time h hn here so this is the Taylor expansion up to first order okay we just uh, focus on the first order Taylor expansion. Okay, for example, yeah. So now if you take your function in two variables, yeah, x1 square, x2 square, x1 logarithm, x1, okay, then you can compute. So what is your partial f with respect to x1? Uh, so this one is so how do how do I verify this one? So let me compute it for you, right? So now if I use MATLAB, so I stop this, I start my MATLAB. Okay, so we we start another one. So this one is you have f of maybe maybe we have uh, two variable x one and x two, right? Equal. I'm oh, sorry. So x one square. Actually, maybe it's better to do like this. So x is a vector. Yeah then you just have x1 square yeah plus x2 square yeah plus logarithm of x1 yeah and now what is the what is the partial with respect to x1 so this is the correct definition yeah so now what is the partial with respect to x1? So say the f1, yeah, will be partial um, so remember x is a vector, right? So x x is a vector. Right? So so then you have, can have two time x1 okay so this is a partial with respect to x1 plus so remember logarithm here is a natural log yeah so that will be one of x1 okay and then partial with respect to x2 will be uh, just two x2 okay then what is my Taylor expansion? So my Taylor expansion will be uh, F, maybe Taylor, right? So TF or Taylor expansion will be F of X, okay, plus, or maybe this one should be a, a function as well, yeah? So remember X is a vector, yeah? So, uh, So what is the formula? So the the formula will be well, it has to have a, a vector h as well. Yeah. So you have f of x time the f one and x multiply with h one plus the f two x multiply with h two. Okay, so now what is the the value at one and two? So let me put x is a vector one comma two, right? And h is 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Okay, so what is the exact value of 1.1 and 2.2? 
Yeah, maybe I, I just print it out, yeah? And what is the value of the data expansion? So now I just have X and H, X comma H, yeah? And now I just run it. Okay, so this one maybe I not do. Okay, so now the problem is I have to put in uh, a vector. So x plus h is the correct one. Okay, so you see the exact value is 6.1453 something, yeah? And the Taylor expansion is 6.1. Okay, so, so that is exactly what we have on the slide. So, so we, we just verify this by writing a few MATLAB commands. Yeah? So this one has exact value. And this one is the Taylor um, expansion in, <coughs> in, in, in first degree. Yeah? Okay. So now, how do we how do we use this um, how do we use this style expansion how do we use this style expansion so how do we use this style expansion so so now we 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 want to solve the the system of nonlinear equation right so remember we have uh, n equations, yeah? And then we have n variables. So we have we have a system of nonlinear equation, n equations. Then suppose my solution is x star. So x star now is a vector, okay? Then my iteration at the gate iteration is also a vector, yeah? Okay, so now I use the Taylor expansion. Okay, then I I write out the Taylor expansion for F1. So it will be of this form. Okay. So remember we use Taylor expansion over one one variables. Sorry, over n variables. Yeah. So that's why we have a partial derivative uh, of x1 up to partial of xn. And so now, remember we we put x star here, yeah. And then what do we get here? We get zero, right? Because x star is a solution. Yeah. So so now let me let me write out in, in terms of a uh, matrix notation for you. Yeah. So so let me. So, so remember we have we have so this is the formula for for Taylor expansion in variable, yeah, in, in, in variables, yeah. So f of x is or maybe f of x plus h, yeah. Or maybe we'll just 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 write f of x equal f uh, x zero plus partial f with respect to x one x minus x zero plus dot dot, dot partial f with respect to x n x minus x n yeah so so this one remember this one is is um is maybe 
but it should be x zero of 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 the, the first the the first elements of x zero, right? So maybe it's not it's not a good notation. Maybe let me write down again. So maybe let 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 x to be x one x two up to x n. Okay, and then we let x zero, right? Or maybe let x x um maybe x k, yeah? not not x zero, but x k. Use the notation that in the last line. Yeah? So x k, yeah. So why why we have x k? I will explain it later. But assume that we have x k, yeah. Then it will be it will be x k one, x k two, up to x k n, right? Okay. So now, what is the Taylor expansion? So Taylor expansion, we have f one of uh, x. Okay, so x is a vector. Is f one. xk okay so I, I span it around xk so this is a vector so vector put a tilde here yeah plus partial f1 so remember the remember the the the, uh, the, the function has n components f1 up to fn yeah so this one partial x1 yeah and then you have xk the first component, okay, minus minus x one, okay. So remember, this one is the component of the vector x plus, but not up to partial f n. Sorry, partial f one over x n. Yeah, of x n k minus x n you see it yeah and, and now if i put x equal to be x star yeah so i if i put x to be x star then then this one becomes star right one becomes star and becomes star yeah and why I put x to be x star? Because I want this one to be zero because I assume that uh, x star is the zero of, of the system, okay? And, and you do the same for, you do the same for f2, f3, up to fn. So in the end, I have fn, x star, right? Equal, F one, sorry, F n, yeah, F n, X k, okay, so X k is just some approximation, yeah, of X star plus partial F n, okay, so because now we move to the n uh, component of the function F, yeah, so partial X one, and this one is X one k minus x1 star okay so plus dot, 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 dot up to partial fn over xn xn k minus x n star okay so remember because we have n equations we have n equations so we have to write out Taylor expansion around xk for n n equations okay so now can i simplify this can i simplify this into the can i simplify this into the can i simplify this into a system of of linear system can i simplify this well first i have to rewrite this into into uh, a system of 
linear equation, right? So suppose I suppose I have this, yeah. And now I just I split it up. Okay, so I just try, okay, so this one will be my vector f1 x star f2 x star so column vectors yeah up to fn x star i mean at least on the on the left i just got i got a big column like this equals zero so this is zero vectors yeah and it equal Okay, so now we have to be a bit careful, yeah? So now, if you uh, split it into, into a vector, yeah? Then this one will be F1 XK vector, right? So up to Fn vector XK. Okay, plus, okay, now this is a tricky part. So how do we write down, how do we write down this system in terms of a matrix? Well, look at this one. So this one will be like uh, column vectors and you multiply with this matrix. Yeah, then, okay, so first look at the, look at the matrix I'm going to write down, yeah? So it will be partial, F1, X1, partial F1, sorry, partial F2, uh, F1, F1, X2, right? Because I'm going to, to multiply with the uh, so partial F1, partial Xn. Okay, so then going down here, partial fn partial x1 again yeah but then this one will be partial fn over partial x2 and I'll that partial fn over partial xn okay so this is a square matrix yeah and then on the, the column it just x1 k minus x1 star x2 k minus x2 star and so on xn k minus xn star okay well it's a bit lengthy but now you can write down in terms of a vector so this one will be the vector f at x star right and then this one will be a vector f at xk okay and this one we call it a jacobian matrix jacobian matrix yeah so at, at xk at xk so remember when i put a theorem in that as a vector and this one will be just a vector x k minus the vector x star. Okay, so that is the compressed form of of the system we we wrote, you know, like before. Yeah, and remember this one one equal zero the f x zero fx star equals zero okay yeah so 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 what what we are trying to say is i'm going to move to the next slide yeah so what i'm going to say is the whole the whole system here can be compressed into this this uh, equation remember this f is a vector from f1 f2 f3 up to fn okay and xk has n components yeah 
Okay. And question. Yes, X star is the actual solution. Yes, X star actual solution. So why I have an approximation here? Well, because remember we use a Taylor expansion. So Taylor expansion is not the exact uh, value of the function, but it's approximate. And we use Taylor expansion of order one, yeah? So you see, we, we reduce everything into this simple equation, but everything here is a vector and the J is a matrix, uh, N by N matrix. So XK is a vector, X star is the vector of actual solution, yeah? And now, you know, I mean, if you <clears throat> assume that this matrix is non-singular, then you, you can have an inverse, yeah? And you can solve this equation, right? You move, you move, uh, F to the left, I'm sorry, you move F to the right, you take inverse, and then, you know, you can rewrite X star as at this uh, expression, right? And then this gives you the Newton method for, for multivariate variables, right? Because you see, before it's uh, approximate, so you see, this one is approximate the solution, x star, right? So if you do iteration, k, k plus one, k plus two, then you, you get into the, uh, also the Newton method for multivariate case. Okay, so first we choose the initial guess, yeah? So x one is initial guess. And then, well, we don't want to, we don't want to find the inverse of the of uh, of, um, of the system, right? I mean, we don't want to find the inverse of the matrix, but we do it by solving this linear system. Okay, and when you solve it, you get the vector d. So the vector d is just a solution of you know j d equal minus f for for this one. Yeah, then you just Lock it in, then you got the next iteration. Yeah. And so that is the Newton method for, for multivariate case. And you see, if you remember in the single variable, you have xk plus one equal xk minus f of xk over f prime of xk, right? But you know, this F prime of XK, when you have two or three variables, it becomes just the inverse of the Jacobian. Okay, so, so it's not a single element anymore. So it becomes an inverse of the Jacobian. And we never compute the inverse of the Jacobian. Okay, we, we just solve this linear system. Okay. So next time, I think I will go over this at least numerically, yeah? So this one, if we just have an example here, but next time I will show you how we implement this in MATLAB, okay? So maybe on Friday, okay? So I will stop the recording here and see whether, ah, we don't have a lectures on Fridays, good point. Sorry about that, no, 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 good Friday. Yeah. Okay, so, but anyway, so um, then, then you can see that, okay? So this one is the, 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 the case when you have only two variables. You, you have F1 is given like this, F2 is given like this. Then initial guess is two, four, right? Then you compute a Jacobian, yeah? And then the next iteration, you got X2 to be like this. You compute the Jacobian and X2. Then uh, X3, you compute the Jacobian and X3 and so on. And you will see that, <clears throat> you know, after eight iteration, you see the, the method converts to the correct solution. Yeah, so because when you evaluate F1, 
the vector x1, x2, you got you know close to zero. And f2, yeah, you got close to zero. So maybe I will post a MATLAB script, you know, for solving this uh, on Moodle. Yeah, but that is about Newton methods. So uh, I stop the recording here.